For those of you that don't know, my name is Allison Donor. I'm the president of Craig Wiggins Coaching, and we are thrilled to have everyone here today. So I was an agency owner for 15 years, and unfortunately, I did not know about performology. I'm going to be 100% honest. So I mentor clients. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one and group trainings, and a lot of people... Um, efficiency on customer service is, is my jam. And so I got the pleasure of looking at performology through other agents. And I'm like, what is this amazing invention? And so I don't want to take away from her presentation, but you, I don't promote a lot of products, but y'all got to hear me out on this, both sales and service. This system top notch can save you so much time, so much payroll, improve your processes, improve your client experience. So I will let Shawnee take it from here and I'll uh, let you know in any personalized tidbits that I have as she's talking, but I'll let you do your thing. Awesome. Thank you. So You're I welcome. just have a, a couple of questions that I just want to make sure that I understand who's on the call and how much time yeah. I have. Um, so I can see people are still joining and I can see the chat. How do I see the chat on here? Everybody um, who's ever been on a call with me knows that I struggle with Zoom. So if How do I know what they're asking? Yeah. So I will read you the Q&As in okay. the chat. So you don't have to worry about keeping up with that. Oh, good. Okay. I'm used to having to do that on my own. Thank you. Yeah. And then is it, we've got agency owners and staff members on the call, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. members and non-members, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. And so um, I see people putting some chats out there saying how much of a game changer it is. Thank you so much for saying all that. Um, can I share my screen? Absolutely. Awesome. It says host has disabled. Oh, well, Joseph, hold on. I'll do that for you. That's my bad. Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Well, while I'm getting that fixed for you, um, awesome. I will tell you guys just a couple of things just to give like a little preview. Um, when you are trying to know what's going on in your agency instantly is probably the, the biggest benefit when it comes to using performology. Like where am I at sales wise? What are my service people doing all day? That That is one that I get a lot. People are like, well, my service people are only um, on the phone two hours a day. What do they do all day? And I'm like, well, they're doing a lot. You just don't know because you don't have the stats in front of you or anything like that. And so this is a way that you can literally quantify what your service people are doing all day and then also get very high level like health checks of how the agency's doing with what's going out and what's coming in. So that is one of the, the biggest pluses to this is being able to see what people are doing in real time. Thank you right. for that. Yes. Um, so how do I know which screen I'm sharing? I'm terrible at this. I'm sharing. No, you're good. <laughs> so I can see your PNC Pro, PNC Perfect. Premium Elite, Honoring, all those things. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to try and not make this a demo of Perfumology. I'm going to talk more about the benefits of using a tool that allows you to see your agency from a perspective that makes sense from a three-win perspective. Okay. So when we are coaching people on how to lay out their platform. The idea of a performance management platform is that it's a win for the sales team. It's a win for the service team. And it's a win for the agency owner. So if I look at your agency and I look at the growth of your business, all three of those things need to be aligned and connected. And we need to maximize the way that we are looking at the agency as a team together, but also give each individual a way to see their own information so that it clearly is communicated to them where they need to be. So when you're designing your goals, it really depends on what's important to you in that moment in time. So when you're talking to your team as a business owner, if every day you're talking to your team about the number of items they sold, I should have a goal that is associated with items that they sold. If you're talking to your team about the uh, number of quotes, they should have a quote goal that clearly defines how many they're supposed to do. So however it is that you're communicating your messaging strategy, it should be shown in the system in a way that they can easily see that information. 
ultimately a performance management platform is designed to put the control in their hands in a way that they become their own manager. They know what they're doing. They know what they need to do. They need, they know exactly how to be successful without you having to tell them every day. That doesn't mean you as a management team or a agency owner aren't going to look at these numbers with your team, but we want everything to be so transparent and right in front of them. The goal suite is designed for you to show them exactly what they need to do to hit success. Now, if you have a goal suite that is not aligned with your compensation, then I, I absolutely recommend you reassess what's on your goal suite for your individual producers. So this goal suite, I actually put together as an example when I was looking at helping agents get from pro to elite and um, what numbers we needed to be at pro and what numbers we needed to be at elite. And I've done this with several agencies. Well, if you're looking at a certain number for your agency to hit a certain key uh, metric to be successful, then this is what you need. Your staff needs to see a, a similar view that is aligned with their compensation. So, um, and Nikki Jones is on the call and I did this with Nikki Jones's team and um, I don't remember exactly how we did it, but I know we looked at, Nikki wants them to take home an, a certain amount of um, compensation every single month. And she's given them a really clear map of this is how many autos and this is how many condos and this is how many of this pro policy. Her team actually shows exactly what they need to see here, and it tells them how much they would take home if they achieve that goal. And so um, whether it is a flat dollar amount or a um, tier that they're hitting, it should align with their compensation. I saw some other people who are on the call who their goals are showing a uh, requirement. So if you have an agency requirement, if it says in your package when you you hire somebody new, if you don't do 20000 in premium every month, then you no longer have a job. They should see that requirement so that they know they're hitting the minimum standards. And the label should say requirement, not goal. If you have a goal when you're talking to new hires, every time um, um, we talk to new hires, we tell them in our agency, we want you to come in at 10% so that you're living a great life based off of earning 10% of everything you're writing. Well, they should then see a goal for that, whatever that tier is that gets them that 10%. If that's not the highest you pay out and you have a tier where if they get to I don't know, 100 items, at 100 items, they get 15%, then they should have a goal that shows them what they need to do to max out that tier. If they're brand new and they're just starting with us, we probably should have a different view of their goals because doing 100 items in the first month that you started an agency is very overwhelming and that's not the way this should display. We should be ramping them up and the software will allow you to build a ramp up goal suite so that you can rip those st staff members up. Aligning your goals with the key talking points within your agency is really important. And it is the way that you are then using the software to motivate your team to get them to the targets you want them to hit. Performance management is all about motivating the team members, inspiring them in order for them to be better for you and your agency. Now, if you're using the software and everything in it, you're gonna use that lead suite. And that lead suite is then going to change the way that you look at certain things. Now, a lot of people will ask me, what about lead manager? I'm not stepping on the toes of lead manager. I'm capturing quotes in this lead suite. If you're gonna maximize the lead suite, then there's certain things you should be doing on a daily basis. If you're not doing these things, I'm going to employ you to do them ASAP. There is a feature coming out in two weeks that will change the reporting functions and perfumology. So please do these two things. Number one, upload your quotes every single day. If you're an all state agency, the quote report comes through, upload it every single day, and it will capture all of your data. If you're not an all-state agency and you're utilizing perfumology on the independent side, we can capture that data from your rater. So upload that information every single day. If you do not get the lead source from um, your quote report, then or your reason for selling or your prior company information, you should ask your team to take 
one minute of time every single day to import this information. Now, if you're on a platform that's with a independent carrier or with a non-Allstate carrier, and you have integrations with your lead management system, then you don't have to do this. But if you're a captive carrier with some restrictions like Allstate, updating your leads every day is going to be a game changer. The source information, the reason, and the prior company is all going to be captured when the staff tell you they did those things. The reason this is going to be a game changer is the new feature coming out in Perfumology will automate your lead um, information, your close ratios, your vendors, and it will tell you whether things are being bundled at, at point of quote. So this is going to be really important as an agency owner. Yeah, and I just wanted to like give this perspective from an agency owner's point is that like one of the biggest marketing question marks we get is like, what's my ROI? What should I be tweaking? What without a system like this, you really are, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, right? Well, I think it's this zip code. Well, I think it's this lead vendor. Well, I think we can't be doing, I think when we have a system that literally, as long as we're putting in the lead source that you can easily toggle into reports and be like, okay, you know, Bob's live transfers, those are horrible. Like those are costing me so much money. And then they're not, my return on investment just isn't there. You need something like this to be able to make those decisions without assumptions, what ifs and guesses like this is it guys. So like one of the biggest questions for marketing, where to spend my money. If you have real data, because you're using performology, this is extremely helpful. So just need to drive that home. <laughs> Sorry. So, and I love that you did that because the, the next thing I'm going to say to, to all of you is the um, second piece of this is clearly defining the way your agency views leads. The way that you talk about things should be crystal clear within your agency. And I'm going to use cross-sale and referral as my example. So many times I hear people say, well, we cross-sold that. And I'll say to them, okay, so tell me what happened. They say, well, the customer called in, they have home and auto with us, and we cross-sold them a pop policy. Okay, that's great. If they called in for service and your staff members said, by the way, you don't have pop, that is truly a cross-sale. If they called into your agency because they have policies with you and they just went out and bought a new motorcycle, you are no longer cross-selling. You are order taking. That's it. It's as much as driving up to the Dunkin' Donuts drive through window. So defining that is really important. The other thing that I hear people say that um, when it comes to not defining things correctly is referral. Well, I gave a referral. Well, if I'm in service, and I uncover a new opportunity and I pass that to the sales team, it's an existing customer within our agency, that is not a referral. The definition of a referral is somebody who is not with your agency being sent to your agency. So that's usually coming from a third party. It's your realtors that are referring you new clients. That's a referral. We use the same words interchangeably a lot in our businesses, and we need to make sure we're defining things correctly. Now, I use those as examples, but I will have people say to me, oh, well, that's a Everquote lead. And I look at it and I say, well, you originally sold that person four months ago. And yes, back then it was an Everquote lead, but that's not the lead source now. It's been four months. What happened? Everquote didn't generate a new lead for you. Your team generated that lead. So making sure that you define how your lead sources are being um, utilized within your agencies, make sure that you get better data. With that being said, if you are an agency owner that goes to your team and says to your team, I need you to do this because I need to make decisions. I want to know my return on investment and I want to be able to spend the money in the right directions. Your team doesn't care. You said, I, 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 I. If you go to your team and you say to them, in order for me to buy you better leads, you need to help me understand where our leads are coming from. You need to provide me with really good information so that I can make good decisions for you. Totally changes whether or not they're going to do this for you every single day. 
because now you're asking them because you want to make their lives easier. There is not a single LSP in the world who wants to call out on a hundred people to only do 10 quotes, to only have no sales because they're spinning their wheels with a crappy lead vendor. So they will understand that it is going to help them. And ultimately the one minute of time they take to do this every day is going to save them time in the long run because you're going to buy leads from better vendors. So if you change the way you communicate that message, you change the way that you look at this from a perspective in terms of the culture within your agency, your team is going to be so much more responsive. Now, one of the things that people do not realize about this lead suite, the functions here are the same as the sales suite. So you can have a focus function so anybody who's on this call who is focusing on life and health, whether that's right now or in the new year, this life and health feature is huge to be able to keep track of what's going on with all of those opportunities. Now, there's two things that are true about this process. One is longer than your PNC process. So we need to keep track of it for a longer period of time. And two, you have to keep track of it in two directions. You have to keep track of what you're sending out to your financial specialists, especially if they're not within your agency. And then you have to keep track of what your staff is actually doing. With the Perfmology platform, you can do both of those things, but also you can pay your team from so many different perspectives. You can pay them based off of the number of opportunities they send to your financial specialist. You can pay them tiered. So if you do one to four leads a month to the financial specialist, you get $25 per kept appointment. If you do five to eight, you get $30 per kept appointment. If you do... Um, nine to 12, you get $40 per kept appointment. So the tiered system that you use for your sales can also be done on kept appointments. It can be done on submitted apps. It can be done on issued policies. You can pay from any perspective you want to with that life being important to your agency, but maybe not that staff member being the producer. So please keep in mind that the lead suite is also designed for that life business. Now, when your staff is indicating a sale, it's going to be captured into that sales suite and you are going to be able to focus and the, um, use the filters to capture different pieces of data. One of the things that um, we have is that leaderboard where every time we do something, we can see that information. We are doing some customizations for New York agents, California agents, people who are not selling as much. And we are utilizing the sales suite to record things that are outside the normal view of things. And so please, when you're looking at perfumology, know that we are constantly adapting to what's going on in the market and looking at ways for you to be able to still engage your team on those daily activities or those daily tasks that they're completing that are maybe not sales related, but are, um, or not new sales related, but are important to your agency because we're increasing premium or we're um, doing reviews that are maintaining our customers to ensure that we are um, keeping our retention rate where we need it to be. Now in the sales suite, this is my favorite thing to look at. And anybody who's been on a call with me um, that we've done this, you know that it's like a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't mean to look at your terminations um, to you know, show you something that makes you sad, but it does help for us to be able to see some data. And every time I go to the termination sweep, someone will say, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't look at it. But it's really important to evaluate your terminations. When Allie's talking about the retention things in the service side of the house, we need to have a baseline of information to know where are we at right now. When you look at your terminations, most of you will say to me, they're terminating from rates. Well, I know that's your gut feeling, and I know that's how we all feel about it. But the truth of the matter is they're terminating for a lot of different reasons, and we need to be able to evaluate that the same way we evaluate our sales. Can I Allie pop in to... for a second? I knew you did. <laughs> so this is a huge part of my mentoring um, job that I help people understand their termination. So I'm going to do a very high level but like the number one reason on this account is undefined like that, that should not be happening. You shouldn't have a bunch of others, like your people should be asking questions um, to where you, you have actual answers. Because if we don't ask people why they're leaving, then we're, we're probably not doing a very good job at trying to save them or win them back because that information is critical. So 
Yes, the rates are pretty strong, but look how close the non-payment is to that. That, you know, if you hover over it, it'll actually tell you, you know, this agency could possibly have a a non-payment process problem, whether they're pending cancellation audit, their cancellation audit, that would be the first place I would go. When people ask me, how do, how do I fix my retention? I was like, well, you need to tell me what's broken and then I'll tell you how to fix it. This tells you what's broken in a few clicks. This is what the data you need to know. If you have people that are dissatisfied with claims is further up the line, you need to work on your claims process. So Hopefully, you know, that makes sense to you, but you you can't just start working on a bunch of customer service processes to fix retention when you might not have a problem with customer service being the reason people are leaving. It's literally number 12 on the list. Let's let's work on the high priority problems, discussing rate increases, our pending cancel audits, things like that. Start working on the biggest ones. But if you don't know what the biggest ones are because people are leaving them in other or undefined, that's a problem. And, mm -hmm. and I would find those CSRs and I'd be like, I need answers because if you don't know why people are leaving, you're not trying to save them. And so that's my insight on how this report is so amazing. So um, Allie is like my spirit animal. I love her so much. <laughs> so <laughs> the um, the importance of this is if if you have a process to evaluate your sales, then shouldn't you have a process to evaluate your terminations? If you have a sales process, then you should have a cancellation process. And if you have a cancellation process and non-payment is really high on this list, that tells us something is broken. And so if it's broken, we need to, first of all, define what the process is, evaluate where the potential break point is, then redefine the process and then implement that process. And so if we know non-payments is a concern, we have to go to the people who are currently working that process and find out what they're doing. But I, uh, I'll i say the most important thing to do for that is to make sure you go at it as a, we're trying to learn and for order up for us to get better. I'll have conversations with my clients and I tell them I'm asking a lot of questions, not because I doubt what you're doing. I'm asking the questions because I need to understand what's happening so that we can help make a decision that pivots towards success so that we can correct the problem or correct where we're missing a key outreach point or a key messaging strategy. The three biggest things that I find are um, causing issues on the service side is either one, we misdefined what we're supposed to be doing in service. We're telling them to complete tasks instead of looking for them to find results of, that are successful. So if we're too task oriented, our staff is checking the box. Yes, I sent that email. And they're not tied to did that customer actually get saved? So that's number one. Number two is if we've defined all that for them and they're not task oriented, they're results oriented, and we're still not seeing success, then what is the messaging strategy? I was in a conference recently and somebody said, if you call the agency and say, I want to cancel, and the person on the other line says, sure, let me process the termination for you. You've got a problem. You've got a messaging strategy problem. Because what they should be doing is saying, oh no, why do you want to leave our agency? We value you so much. And now, mind you, I do not have scripts, but that's what Ali's here for. And CWC has some really great content to be able to provide you with the language you need to use and make sure that your staff is using in order to have better customer save conversations. And if they're having those quality customer save conversations, like what Ali just said, is that you are not going to see undefined or other, you're going to see the reason why they're truly leaving your agency. But even more importantly, them telling you a little bit more about that will give your team an opportunity to listen. It will give your customer the opportunity to feel like they're heard and you're way more likely to save that customer. Now, the third thing that I see that is a problem in the process is when we're not holding the team accountable for the um conversations and the results that they're getting. If we're not looking at this and evaluating that with the team, then you potentially are gonna to continue to see the same problems happen. So you can't give them a um, path 
in order to get to success and tell them what they need to do and give them all these scripts and then not evaluate what they're doing. The retention suite is designed specifically for you to be able to see what's happening on a daily basis and for you to be able to evaluate. So it starts with our ability to assign responsibility to the team members. I'm gonna use the cancellation list as my example because Allie used that as her example. So if I, if this were my agency, and again, I'm using some old data because this is a demo account, but if this were my agency and I opened up the cancellation list and I was looking at last month's cancellations and I saw that more than 37, about 37% 37 of them had not been contacted, that's a problem. And so if nobody reached out to these customers, then all of these customers are still at risk. If I look at my agency and I see uh, only 13% of them have successfully uh, had payments taken, then again, that's a problem. If I look at specifically, if I drill down and I see something terminated and was uncontacted, I'm as an agency owner, I'm ready to fire somebody. Now the software cross populates. So I can actually look right here and see that this was a cancel rewrite. So now I'm not as upset, but I still want to know why didn't we work the process in perfumology in order to have some transparency here? A lot of people will ask me about e-agent versus perfumology. So when you look at all of the, your resources, you're getting the list from a um, resource. And so, and I'm talking mostly to Allstate because I saw so many of my Allstate friends, but even if you're farmers or you're an independent, if you're using easy links, you're getting a list from a resource. You're uploading it into perfumology. You're um, then working that list, right? So the resource is the list that we export into Excel. So maybe if you're Allstate, a cancellation audit. And then you're assigning responsibilities. That's being done in perfumology. And then once you've assigned those responsibilities, your staff is indicating their latest activity versus the customer status. So what they did last, and then the, how far did I take the customer towards success? The terminations are cross-populating and letting me know how many people have since terminated. So if somebody has since terminated and I look at that timeline and I don't see any activity, then that's when I'm having a coaching conversation with that service representative to find out what they did. If you're using e-agent and you're an all-state agency and you're using perfumology, you do not want to duplicate those efforts. And so you want to make sure that in e-agent, you're noting that you're working a process. You want to make sure you note any customer conversation they have. And then you want to make sure they note the result when it occurs. I don't necessarily want them to update e-agent every time they do a task because it's here and I can actually copy and paste the timeline. Now, it's the end of the year, and retention is really important to everybody at the end of the year, especially if we're being held accountable for certain numbers to hit bonus metrics. We do have additional ways to utilize perfumology. So in a lot of agencies, they have some kind of a cancellation list. In some agencies, they have a pending cancel list. There's a renewal list, typically. There is... Um, an onboarding option here where you can assign the responsibility of every sale that occurs goes to a specialist who reviews those sales and make sure the paperwork is all done correctly and confirms that those sales are good sales so that we don't lose customers right after selling them. There's also a book of business outreach, which can be utilized for anything. And I'm going to give you a couple examples of what we we have used this for. I've got a lot of um, clients who work in markets where carriers will just leave the market. Um, they'll take all of their business outside of that market. And then the agencies are faced with having to rewrite those policies into other um, products. And so um, we can take that entire book and we can predict when they're coming up for renewals. And when they're non-renewing, we can then assign responsibility to the team members to work those in advance. Another reason people have used this is I've got a um, group of agents that have pulled their list of current customers that have life policies that are between certain age brackets, 45 and 60 as an example, that they want to try to rewrite them or write them another policy. And we can use this for that outreach. 
Um, I've got customers that have purchased additional businesses and upon purchasing them, they want to introduce the agency to those customers that they purchased. And they use this book to call out on all of those customers, but strategically, they don't want to do it at renewal. They want to do it within a certain time period. Um, some of them have done it based off of birthday months. Some of them have done it within 90 days of the purchase. So there's lots of different things you can do to assign responsibility to your service team to make outbound phone calls to either um, save customers or to um, do any type of a service task. And so that is a new feature. A little tidbit for everybody, There's I mentioned earlier, there's that lead feature that's coming out. Um, we're doing this um, three weeks of Christmas here at Perfmology. A new feature came out on Monday. There's another one coming out next week. There's one coming out on Christmas Day. Uh, the one that is um, that came out this week was all about having real-time um, information on bundling. Uh, the one that's coming out on Christmas Day is all about that um, lead suite. And then there's additional features that will be added to Perfumology in Q1 based off of the results of the responses from these new features. And so we have a, an entire um, team dedicated to working on the retention suite in Q1. So your feedback is important. I know there's people on this call who have asked me about different types of audits and how they can utilize those. Um, it's a really great time to um, send that feature request in through the help desk if you're an existing customer to tell me what types of features you wish you had um, or which types of audits you wish you could utilize um, based off of things that are occurring in your agency. I'm gonna take a minute there and let Allie, um, I saw Allie and I, I know you're probably reading them and answering them and doing whatever, but I see this number six is stressing me out on this Q and A. Yes, and I got 12 you. chats. <laughs> yes, I got you. All right. So the first question uh, is for you. Uh, do we set up an appointment on Shawnee's calendar to help us set up some of those specific goals? Great question. Who asked the question? Uh, Tanya Lopez. Tanya Lopez. So you can set up an appointment on my calendar. So there's, so just like with the, um, with CWC, it performs, does the same thing. There's two packages. There's a standard package and there's a lot of do it yourself things. And then there is professional services packages where you can meet with your performance coach to have coaching conversations about what you need to do um, within your platform. Some of the things do not warrant a conversation with me. Goal setting is really easy within Perfumology, and in your help desk, there is actually um, several videos, educational videos, that talk about setting up goals. I believe the goal video is 23 minutes long. If you want to learn about how to design those goals based off of aligning your team, so that would be the educational piece of setting up your goals. How do I align it with what I want them to do? If you're just looking to edit add, delete, or duplicate a goal, they're about a one minute video that you can find out here on this help desk that will help you know which buttons to push within the software to do that. If you are a professional services client and you're looking to readjust everything for 2024 or evaluate things before you adjust things for 2024, then yes, you can book on my calendar and you have a link to my calendar. Most of you have my email and it's in every signature of um, every uh, email signature that you receive. So anybody can do um, to can book that appointment. If you are not a professional services client, it is a fee to have that service. So email support before you book the appointment, because if you can do it yourself, why would you pay me to do it for you? Not that yeah, I don't mind. I do <laughs> give a shout out to the support department. So um, again, this all kind of came as a surprise to me after being an agency owner. I was like, what is this goodness? I'm self-taught from the training videos, but the few times I had to ask unique questions to their support department, um, their responses have been great. Like there was just one that they were stumped on. I was stumped on it ended up being operator error. Somebody was doing something we neither side would have ever imagined was happening, but we got to the bottom of it. So, you know, they, they were great. So even if you're not in the professional services where you can, you know, lean on somebody like Shawnee or Shawnee herself, their support department, I felt has been incredible at responding to any questions that I couldn't get answered in the um, video or help library. So I wanted to give kudos where kudos is due. 
Well, and okay. if they can't figure something out, um, so I'm a data analyst by trade and, and so I love data. If somebody can't figure something out, they will get either me involved or uh, Pariso is one of our, our top um, consultants on compensation. They'll get someone else involved and we'll share screens. I will tell you, even though I don't like to admit this, on Saturday, I was meeting with an, an agency owner to figure out what the problem was. And it definitely was a person that made a mistake mm -hmm. and some things that they had clicked and things weren't working because of that. But we will figure it out. If we can't on our own, we will meet with you, even if you're not a professional services client, because we don't want to have a broken system. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, Candace Myers asked, what AMS systems do you integrate with? All of them. Um, I hate when people ask me this question because I always only think of like three. So EasyLinks, Hotsoft, um, shoot, Agency uh, MVP. Um, and I don't have the list in front of me, but if you if you want to email me and tell me what one you're using, I can tell you the integration process. Um, there are some systems, agency management systems that are do not have open APIs or free integrations. And if you choose not to have an open API or a free integration, there are secondary processes where you can export and upload. It just depends on which systems you're looking at. I can think of one in particular that charges a fee to integrate, and then they add to your monthly subscription for their service to have that open. So I have agents that I work with that are on that particular system that do not integrate. They'd rather pay their staff um, to take two minutes a day to download and upload. So it's totally up to you guys how you want to do it. But if you send me an email, I can tell you all about that integration option. That's awesome. Okay, Greta asks, what do you suggest the LSP um, enters their own information or an office manager? So I guess like the sales lead source part. So um, I first suggest that you educate everybody. And then it depends on that office manager's role. So if you have an office, everybody defines things differently. So if you have an office manager whose responsibilities are for data entry and admin duties, then you can have them do it. It would save your sales team. But if you have an, a manager who is an operations manager or sales manager or service manager, then having them do administrative tasks takes away from coaching, mentoring, your team members. And so then why would I want them to take extra time? It will take the person who produced the sale or produced the quote less time to update a lead than the person having to look all that up. Mm -hmm. And so I much prefer the staff member be engaged in the process and understand the value of that process and how it impacts them. Okay. Awesome. Um, Alicia asked, how do I add to my list options? Alicia, what's Alicia's last name? Douglas. Hmm. I'm usually really good, but I can't think of what agency she's in. So list options, there's lots of options that you can add to. So in your settings suite is where you can add most of your stuff. Um, so if you're talking about lead sources or prior companies or those types of things, it's going to be in your settings. If you're referring to carriers and products, then it is a help desk re request because those carriers and products are associated with about four or five different things on the back end of your account. And so they will attach it to all of the things you might want. Awesome. awesome. Very good. Okay. All right. Next question from Lindsay is, is there a process or guideline that you use for the service related tasks of step-by-step -step for when a staff members should document an e-agent versus performology? I love this question. If you are a professional services client, you would have had a conversation with me, but if you're not, you can email me and I will send you my retain cheat sheet. And this is not on the help desk. I, I should probably send it to management and get it approved. Sometimes I go rogue. Um, but I started creating this after working with people like Allie, who told me more and more about these lists and why they're working them and what they're doing. So service agents are who taught me this information across the country. And so I've created this cheat sheet, best practices for outreach. It gives you a little bit of a, a brief definition of how when you update something in perfumology, what it, how it impacts the customer results. And then I've got this little note here of when they should do their um, updates in e-agent. 
Now you can actually copy and paste the activity timeline into one e-agent note, and it will show the date, time, and stamp of everything you did. I refer to this as the CYA method. So after you do not get a hold of the customer and you want to make sure that when your agency owner is looking in e-agent after the customer calls in mad because their, term, their policy terminated, you have a clear list of everything. If you talk to, if you noted that you first started working on that customer, then you noted every time there's a conversation and then you put your conclusion, those three notes in e-agent make this irrelevant. But if you've never talked to the customer, this is very relevant. And so I can send anybody who needs it this cheat sheet. Um, I could also attach it to on the platform to uh, the document if you want me to. Totally your call, oh, but I could do yeah, that. That's that, that easier than you sending a million um, emails. Okay, and then John Tunnel asked, "What is the update for the bundling that came out?" John Tunnel um, is one of my favorite people. And um, so that is a daily bundling update report that can be uploaded into Perfmology to confirm which policies are either bundled or monoline or preferred bundled. And so it's utilizing one of your dash reports to cross populate the sales that have been inputted by the staff in order to define the bundling reason code. So those two reports, um, there's three reports that can cross populate in the sales suite and um, it will show that reason code with the accurate bundled reason code per Allstate. So I have a sidebar question on that. So if somebody doesn't have their whole book of business, say I have a homeowners that I've had since 1972 and we finally get the auto, it's not going to know that if it wasn't sold, you know, um, at the same time is one of those dash reports that they're going to load one of the ones that will validate that it is truly bundled since there's that no it, book of business to reference. That's exactly it. That's exactly Perfect. it. So this dash report is now validating based off of all of the policies that are in force at the agency. It is confirming bundled, preferred bundled or monoline. You got a hooray on that one from Lori Bray. Okay. Uh, hey. Doug Moore <laughs> asked, can we upload broker carriers renewals into the retained suite? Doug Moore, you can now, but it's not out yet. But Doug Moore, you can because you're one of my beta clients. And so you're going to get a call from me probably next week asking you to do that. Um, I've been, yes. <laughs> Um, so I've been working with customers over the last few months, especially in Florida and California, to be able to utilize that the iVantage book of business to predict our upcoming renewals so that we can plan to outreach to those customers prior to the renewal. It is not as good as the Allstate report in terms of showing us their um, increased premium or their increased percentage, but it it gives us a list to predict so that the staff know who to work based off of timing. That is awesome. All right, so Candace Myers did a comment. She said, I use Hawksoft, so that is great. So that, that's yes. a good one. And then Alicia Douglas said she's from the Oscar Arnold Agency. Oh, so good, okay. So she asked about the list options. So Alicia, if you're missing an option in the service list, I just thought of that. If you don't have like onboarding on your service list, it might be based off of the timing of when you started your account. And so we might just need to turn a feature on. So if you're thinking service list and you don't have onboarding, you can send a ticket into support and they'll turn on the onboarding feature for you. That's awesome. Okay, Mike Brownie asked, what is the difference in price for a professional service client versus the, the standard, I guess? So great question. It's, it's based off of the size of the agency and the number of users is what determines size. So in our platform, the user is anybody who has to have a unique login so that we can record in their activities or pay them. And so if you have more than 10 users, it's a different pricing. It's up to 10, up to 20, up to 30 is the pricing model. Um, and each one of those, based off of the size, changes whether it's a standard or a professional services package. And so if you need pricing, the best thing to do, if you haven't done a true demo, um, do a true demo. If you feel as though you saw everything you needed to see today, just email me and I will send you your pricing once you tell me how many customers, I mean, sorry, how many um, users you have um, on your account. And so don't tell me how many salespeople you had, common mistake. Tell me how many potential users, the, the you know, three LSPs or um, two customer service people, a telemarketer, tell me who's in your agency and I'll tell you how 
they could use it and then tell you what the pricing would be and you can determine from there. Awesome. Okay. Um, we've got other questions, but I took screenshots because they were in the chat. So give me one second. All right. First question is, um, what are the best practices for uploading leads that come in throughout the day as live transfers from different vendors? Your lead management system. We are not designed to be lead management. So you want to make sure those leads are being uploaded into whatever lead management system you are utilizing. Okay. And then if they close them, when they're putting it in, that's when they choose, this is a live transfer from ABC Live Transfers. You got it. Yes. Okay. If, they, so if it is a same day sale or a one call close, then none of the data would be out here. So they'd add the sale and they'd fill out the form. And your agency owner and management team can decide how much of this form is required. So if I want to know that zip code information for evaluating where my um, leads are coming from in terms of their zip codes, you, you can make that required. If they already put the information into Perfmology, it's in the lead suite already. And all they have to do is find that lead and convert it to a sale. And so if you're looking at this was quoted, I just convert it all the data that was previously entered from either a quote report or from adding the lead because it was a life lead that we already put into the system, or it was um, if you're an Allstate agent and you're doing iVantage, you have your team members put their home quotes in here, whatever that might be. If the lead is already out there, you just convert it. So they're not having to duplicate data entry. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Casey asked who reports or how do they report the reason a household canceled? Um, on Allstate, it comes from whatever cancellation code is entered into the actual endorsement. There's numbers that coincide with, you know, like code 44 might mean cancel rewrite. So it uses those and then it interprets it onto the system. I don't know about the other um, companies. Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. So in almost every carrier that is out there, when you go to process a termination, there is a option where the carrier wants to know why the customer is terminating. And um, in, like Ali said, in all state, it's a number and a code. In some of the carriers, it's literally a defined reason. And that defined reason is then um, recorded and populated. And that's what's coming through in perfumology. I have never come across a carrier in my seven years and working with hundreds of carriers that does not have a person select the reason for termination at point of termination. Yeah. Um, Markel asks, is it possible to upgrade from a standard to a professional account? Oh, absolutely. Send a, a ticket into the support team. Tell them you want to upgrade. They'll send you a link to a calendar um, invite so that you can have a 15 minute conversation to determine what it is that you want to do with that professional service package. And then they'll put you on with the right coach. Great. Uh, Sam asked, is there a way to have terminated policies populate into the process to set winbacks around those X dates? Sure is. There's two videos, um, or sorry, two articles on the help desk. One is a video on how to work winbacks. The other is a step-by-step -step how to upload, assign, and trickle in winbacks um, to those assigned users. That is awesome. Okay. I'm getting through the rest of these questions. Give me one second. Um, let's see. Which report do we use was something that somebody asked at 342. And I feel like that was around the bundling that you were talking about. Like you were saying, uploading, you know, three bundling reports. So they were asking um, what those reports are. So an email came out yesterday um, and it highlighted those reports. And if you did not receive that email, um, send a request into the support team and they will forward you the content of that email so that you can see which report it is. I am usually the report's queen, but off the top of my head, I don't want to say the wrong one because it is very specific on which one and where you get it and the directions are out there. Um, I believe it's like an agency detailed report, but I don't know which agency detail report. Yeah, it might be household bundling detail because that's a that's one. It, 
it's mm -hmm. actually not that one. And that's why I'm hesitant to say it because that's the one we used to use. And for ECP agents, that's the one they can still use to, to note their bundling. But this mm -hmm. one is actually updated. The household bundling is only updated once a month. This yes. report is new and it's updated daily. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, I just totally lost my question. Hold on. <laughs> um, so this is, these are bundling questions. Hold on. Let me go back to, oh, what is the turnaround time usually for your support to answer um, questions? This is a great question. I get this one often. I actually had a conversation with a customer yesterday about this. The more information you provide us, the faster you get your answer. So when you send us a email that says my report won't upload, and then we have to ask you which report, and can you send us a copy of the report, then it takes us longer to get to that answer. And so other tickets come in and you get pushed down the line. It's like an emergency room. What comes in gets triaged first. And then if we have somebody available at that moment, they're going to handle it. If you don't provide us all the data, then they are going to start it and then move to the next problem. So the more you specific you are when you send a ticket in, the better you are to get a response quickly and efficiently and effectively. The other thing I will say is that people will oftentimes send us examples, but not tell us where they got the example. So this happened just recently, and I got a screenshot of somebody's screen, and there was a error and they didn't tell us which suite they were looking at, which customer was the problem, nothing for us to be able to look up and define. And it was truly a, a, the account owners made a mistake, but we can't solve the problem without researching it. So there was about three or four back and forth emails trying to get the answers that we needed um, in order to solve the problem. So the more information you can give us about the issue, the better off we are. The other thing is um, we do oftentimes see where we will respond to somebody and give you an article to read because it's a problem you can solve on your own. And people will reply back to us looking for additional answers, but not read the article. So we the articles are designed to be quick reads with all of your details. If you don't read the article and then answer us back without having read the article, you can't help solve your own problem. Um, I'm using that one as, as an example because things like directions on the reports, they're pretty detailed. There's usually screenshots step by step. And if your report isn't working, most of the time it's because you're maybe doing something wrong. Um, 24 hours is, is our goal for every ticket that we receive. The simple things should be within just several minutes. When it comes to compensation plans, know the timing of when you're asking for it is important. So right now it is December, what, 12th? And um, everybody's compensation plans are going to start to change for the first of the year. So if you're sending in your compensation plan and you need to process your payroll that day, and it is between now and the end of January, it takes longer than that 24 hour promise that we give. The, because everybody is changing their compensation. So please keep that in mind. But also if you are having an issue and um, you've, you're you trying to design a new compensation plan and you would like a result on that, that's a different team. So they'll evaluate your book and tell you, here's how we think you could better do your compensation. So that will take more than 24 hours if you're asking for our advice on how to change the plan more than 24 hours. Got it. Um, um Shannon asked, how do you, how does somebody verify what level they're at with performology? Like they're already a performology customer, but they're not sure what level they're at. Is there a way for them to validate that? Yeah, they can just send a ticket into support and they'll tell them what package that they're on. Um, it doesn't actually show their packages on their platform. Um, it's on our accounting system. And so our team can look it up and tell you if you're on professional services. It's okay. on your receipt. Their receipt would also say it. So if they go back to the receipt, it will say what plan they're on. Okay, so Tanya was saying she uploaded the daily agent transaction detail, which I think is the bundle report that you were trying to think of the name of. Yes, but that's the one. The secondary question was once that's uploaded, how do we view that report on performology? Great question. Um, so there is an article from back when PBR um, came out two years ago about how to see my bundling. Um, and so if you go to the sales suite and you go to policies and you go to buy reason, 
the by reason is being is what's going to dictate bundled monoline and bundled uh, preferred bundled and so if you're you're using that report that's where you'll see it you go to sales policies by reason got it i like it um brian duffy asked where do we see current comp rates that we have submitted in the past like compensation plans so like maybe they had a compensation plan they changed it is there a historical view of those yeah this is a great question brian and a lot of people don't realize they have this so if you go out to your help desk and you click on the drop down next to your name the my activities will show anything that you've requested to the support team, including what you would have submitted for a compensation plan. And believe it or not, people ask this all the time because they don't remember what they sent us. Um, and then they can't find the email. So it will record it under your activities and show what you submitted. If you don't see something submitted here, somebody else in, on your team maybe sent it in, you can actually ask the support team to provide you with a write-up of what is programmed so that you know what your compensation programming is. And they'll send you a document that outlines the the name of the job position and all of the different ways you're compensating. That's awesome. Okay. I have a question. So you mentioned about putting in a ramp up schedule for a new LSP. Where does that get programmed? Oh, great question. So there's two ways people typically handle their um, new team members, either one for 90 days, they're on a different compensation schedule. If that is the case, when you add the user, you would put them on that probationary plan. So I have got a lot of clients that will say, oh, for the first 90 days, we pay them a flat percentage regardless of how much they write. And after 90 days, they then we change it. If that's the case, then when you're adding the new staff member, you're selecting a job position that's the probationary plan. If you are don't do that. And it doesn't matter if in month one, they hit a tier, you're going to pay them the extra percentage, totally fine. But you want to have them on a ramp up for what they see on their um, goal suite. When you select the plan here, you can actually enable a ramp up period right here. And then you can determine how much of a ramp up you want. So if in month one, you want them to be at 25% of the typical goal, you can do 25% here. If in month two, they need to be at 50% of an average goal, and in month three, 75%, you can ramp them up. That's the amazing. key with this ramp up is the effective start date isn't necessarily the day they walked into your agency. It's the day they were able to start writing. So if your staff member had to go through licensing and binding and all of those things, don't put October 1st when they couldn't actually start writing until December 1st. Okay, that's great. That is really great. Um, last thing I want to show people, because I know it's December and it's end of the month, but will you go to the um, sales suite? I just want to make sure everybody knows that this is an easy way to check your points for your growth for end of the year bonus if you're if you're an Allstate person. So when you're in the sales, there is a drop down for terminations, sales, there is net sales. And you can easily see in and out whether you're growing on points or whether you're losing points. So as long as your team members are entering their sales and entering their terminations um, reports like they should be, you can easily see on the net, okay, my down points for this month based on policies going out, policies coming in, or am I up points? So that is probably one of the greatest things to have in December for all state agents for points that are on the bonus grid is you know, where am I like in as much real time as possible? That is a huge benefit um, in chasing your goals. Cause it's one thing to be able to see what's coming in, but it's another thing if you are outpacing your normal termination point rate, or if you're doing better. And so you're freaking out, you're not going to meet your sales goal, but maybe you're not losing as many. You want to have both credits and debits right in front of you. So that net sales is awesome. So the, I'm just going to piggyback on that. Um, yeah and I, I'm assuming you still have it, but years ago, um, Craig Wiggins had a uh, document that they could utilize that would help them predict how many new business points they had to write in order to out 
sell hey, yes. what they were losing. So they're, yep. they could kind of predict their, what they needed for points. So if you have that and you, when you're setting up your agency goals, I recommend you add a agency points goal, but don't forget on your goal suite, you can see your current year. So in this agency, um, I've had a great year. So even though, so I'm, I've way out sold the points that I needed. And so even though my current month I'm behind on points, I'm not freaking out because I know I've outsold what I needed to. And then utilizing this in addition would let me see if I had too many terminated points that I need to reevaluate that. So quarterly, I recommend you reevaluate your points sold, terminated, and per your prediction on what you need by the end of the year. That is awesome. All right, guys, it is the top of the hour. And unfortunately, I could do this all day with her. Like I'm learning so <laughs> much, but I got to start another webinar. So um, any chats or Q&As that we didn't get to that maybe roll in in the next couple of seconds, I will personally get you an answer or I'll ask Shawnee to answer it if I can awesome. answer it myself. I will get this on YouTube and on the platform by tomorrow um, evening. So it can be there if you missed any or need to rewatch it for a refresher. Shawnee, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And if anybody yeah. has any questions, just let us know. Talk to you guys Thanks, later. Guys. Bye. Have a great one. Bye. You too. Bye.